Hello, welcome, or welcome back. Either way, I'm happy to see you. Between the video I put out last week on the scene painting feature of Tile Maps and Godot 4.3 rapidly approaching, I wanted to do a quick video on what that feature looks like in 4.3. And for those of you who asked, and by the way, excellent question, Yes, that feature still totally applies in the new tile map layer feature, and I also want to address some of your concerns about the tile map node being deprecated. So let's start there. As you can see, the tile map node has been deprecated, meaning it's no longer recommended to use it, but it's not going away anytime soon. What for a while means is certainly open to interpretation. Often it has a lot to do with what the community asks for. If you look to Photoshop, they've left the Save for Web as a legacy feature in there for like a decade, and Unity's offering long-term support for versions going quite a few back. As someone who's worked on almost 50 commercial titles, I can tell you if you're in the middle of a project relying heavily on a specific version or a specific feature, it's pretty common to stick with that version unless something you need to use, like say Nintendo's developer tools, requires an update to be compliant. I know developers who are still launching games in 3.5 today. Tom Fulp is still writing games in Flash 5 with ActionScript 2. So if you want to stick with the version you have, you totally can. The good news is, if you're in a position to safely upgrade to 4.3 when it comes out and you want to, the folks working on Godot have given us a nice little feature to quickly convert our tile maps to tile map layers. So let's take a look at that real quick. Here I've got the project from the last video, again, linked in the description down below. Here's our tile map layer. And if we take a look at the properties on this tile map layer, you'll notice we have this section of layers, which is just an array with sub properties for each layer. And as a result, down here on our tile map node, we have this drop down with each individual layer. Now I'll admit, I haven't put in a ton of time with the tile map layers node yet, but I can tell you having logged time with the tile map node, on many, many occasions I've gone to paint stuff into my tile map, having forgotten which layer I was on, paint them onto the wrong layer, and then have to undo it. And I think for me, a lot of this comes down to hidden and nested UI. I can't very easily, at a glance, see all of my tile map layers. Yeah, I can kind of see them here, but this is really muddy. And this drop down only shows me the selected layer. Let's look at converting this to the new tile map layer nodes and see how they differ. So with my tile map selected, if I come down to this tools button and select the extract tile map layers option, you'll see what it's going to do is move each of those layers, which are now gone from our tile map into a tile map layer node individually in our scene. If I select each one of those, I'm going to get more or less the same properties as I had at the tile map, but you'll notice the layers section is gone from our inspector and it's no longer down here because each layer exists as a separate node. To me, this is more intuitive. It's more in line with the way I visually organize things and can take stock of what's in my project. When I want to work on the hero, I select the hero. When I want to work on my props, I select the props. Whereas before, I have to think, well, props are a part of my tile map. I select tile map. I drill in. I find the right. It just gets a little bit confusing. So I like this new layout. Now, using that conversion tool does leave behind a tile map node that we don't need anymore. If we were to create a new tile map layer from scratch. Oh, and by the way, you can see down here, it's notifying us that, hey, this is deprecated. This is very common in software when you're transitioning an old feature into a new feature. Now, if I create one, you'll see I'll get my tile map layer. It looks very familiar. I've got the need to select a tile set. Um, I've got all of the same. They're organized a little bit differently. These used to be kind of in the root with the tile map, and now they're broken into sections, which I appreciate. Um, since I don't need this tile map anymore, here, I'm going to delete this. That was just an example. And because I'm particular about visually and logically organizing things, I can still just create an empty node 2D. I can call it tile layers. I can drag all of these in here, which will give me the ability to collapse that if I'm not working on them. And I get rid of my old tile map. If I run this, everything works exactly as it used to. But now, and this is the part I think I like, if I want to add more rocks, which I know are props, I'm going to come over here and go, oh, I'm adding props. I'm going to click props because it's now it's exposed 
in my scene tree, I can select my scene collection, my block, and I can paint. And the likelihood that I'm gonna paint them onto the background is quite a bit lower because it doesn't make sense for me to ever select the background in the first place, like I might have with the tile map because everything was hidden in that dropdown. And if I play, here are my functional props, no confusion. I like it. Like I said, I've heard some people complaining about this and there are probably some valid complaints. If you've been using the tile map layers and there's something you really love or really dislike about them, let us know in the comments. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, get that dialogue going. I'm here to learn from you as well. And as I said, if you want a deeper dive into how to paint scenes into your tile maps or tile map layers, I'm gonna leave a link up here. Have a look at that. Oh, and I keep forgetting that I have services to plug, which is really not why I'm doing these videos, but it is an opportunity for me to make some money to support the channel. So if you're a developer looking for support with pitching to publishers, working with publishers, need feedback on your game, or need to understand really anything about how the industry works, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to my consultant page. Take a look through it. I have a couple of options. If you don't find something that you're looking for, please get in touch. I'm happy to get creative and try and find something that works for your team. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in the next video.